Dana on the board here, I want to show you a number of maps, and these are the developments that we have basically learned overnight, all right? The Isra in Gaza, you've got 2.3 million people. The Israelis overnight are warning 1.1 million, uh, mostly in the northern section here of Gaza, to move south. Why is that? Uh, we're about to explain. There are essentially three in and out points in Gaza, okay? This is Kirim Shalom in the southeast, all right? That, that is only for transport of goods in and out. That's closed, sealed off. There's Erez in the north here. This is the area here where a lot of people from Gaza, living in Gaza, would cross into Israel on a daily basis, up to 20,000 on behalf of the Israeli uh, Netanyahu government with work permits to work in Israel then come back into Gaza. That's closed. Rafa down here on the border here with Egypt. This is a very tricky spot here, okay? Rafa is where Gazans could go into the Sinai Peninsula, which is a part of Egypt, and they could do that pretty much uh, with free range, primarily, uh, until this war started seven days ago. The Israelis bombed that gate. It is closed. The Egyptians won't open it. The Israelis won't open it. Why is this important? So the Israelis are telling 1.1 million people to move south. They're trying to move people out of the northern area, and I'm going to explain this in a moment, why that's so heavily populated and why Rafah is the key to all of this if you are an innocent civilian living in Gaza. Keep that in mind now, okay? Let's move forward one uh, moment here. This is the population density. We've divided it into five different areas, okay? Upwards of 250,000 are in this Rafa region here. 250,000 in Khan Yunus, a city in the south. Up to 650,000, however, in Gaza City. And this is the area where the Israeli government dropped those leaflets during the daytime, uh, raining down from the sky, warning people to go ahead and heed the warning within 24 hours. You're expected to move out uh, and take, essentially, cover for your own life. Here is the density that we're talking about, all right? This is per square mile. What we've done is we tried to show you a little bit. Every dot on the screen here represents 10 people, okay? It's a crude way of doing it, but I think it shows you the point here. This is Washington, D.C. You see where it is right here with those dots? This is Los Angeles. This is Tel Aviv, and then we get to Gaza. So you get the idea now about the measure of density. I want to show you one aerial picture. There's a neighborhood on the outskirts of Gaza City that's called Rimal. I've been watching this all throughout the week here, okay? Uh, right along the Mediterranean coast, as you see here uh, to the sea in the northwest. I mean, you can see it for yourself. Uh, in this neighborhood, in this part of Gaza, on the outskirts of Gaza City, how dense it can be. Uh, these are buildings. That, it's essentially chock-a-block. It's building after building, house after house. You can see a mosque located over here. Uh, there's a courtyard here, which might be an apartment building, might be a schoolyard, don't know. But you can see now the difficulty here on behalf of the IDF and what they would need to do. And that's why you see the incessant bombing, because the strategy is clear. The Israeli government wants to weaken this part of Gaza. They want to take out as much as they can before they begin this ground invasion. And when that happens, perhaps this weekend, maybe in the early next week, we'll wait and see on that. But just want to get you a measure of what we're seeing right now and try and gauge it as we move throughout the day in the next couple of days, too. Dana. Excellent explanation, Bill. Well, Fran Townsend was President George Bush's Homeland Security Advisor. She knows the region extremely well. She joins us now. Fran, thank you for joining us. We really want to cover two basic areas with you. One, what's happening now with the possible evacuation and the IDF warning. This is a quote from the IDF statement saying, Hamas terrorists are hiding in Gaza City, inside tunnels, underneath houses, and inside buildings populated with innocent Gazan civilians. And basically saying, get out because Hamas terrorists are using you as human shields. And we know that Hamas is telling people to ignore those warnings from the IDF. For our first general topic area with you, could you give us your thoughts this morning on this effort by the IDF? Good morning, Dana. Look, the, the Israel is trying to do the right thing here, right? No one wants innocent Palestinians, women, children, to be caught in the crossfire. And so Israel is doing what is the right thing and trying to warn them to move south. Even if you can't get through the Rafa gate, what they're suggesting is to move south within Gaza. Um, now, we can talk about the humanitarian effort. The Arab Gulf countries ought to be offering to take these folks into countries where they can afford to have them, where they can speak the language. That's not happening yet. In the meantime, folks should, in, in the Gaza Strip, need to move south because Israel is preparing, clearly, for a ground operation, not only to obliterate Hamas, but also to try and see if they can't recover some of the hostages. 
Fran, um, Israel's got a decision to make. And any of our reading and research and interviews that we've conducted over the past week, uh, it's clear on behalf of the Israelis that they feel they have no choice now, that they gave Hamas a pass over the past 10 to 12 years, and that hasn't worked out. And it would appear that they've made up their mind yeah. that, that they're, they're going to flatten Gaza and try and eliminate Hamas. And all of that is much easier said than done. Absolutely. Bill. Look, in any grand operation, it, you're, they risk, Israel risks casualties themselves. We know that in, just from what the clearing operation inside Israel that the IDF did, some of those homes, Gaza, the Hamas left booby-trapped. And so this is going to be a very, very difficult operation for the IDF. But what you're trying to do is remove at least innocent civilians out of the area, both to, to protect them and to protect the IDF soldiers. We know from the past, Hamas will use women, children, Palestinian families as human shields. They'll put and literally put weapons uh, and hostages in their homes, thinking, right, Israel and the West observe rules of war. Even when Hamas obviously does not. I want to take you more than what's happening here at home and this domestic terror threat and get your sense as an expert as to what we should be thinking about. Here's Rebecca Weiner. She's the NYPD Deputy Commissioner of Counterterrorism. You know, I think what we are seeing in the digital universe, which we do see, is a lot of spin up and a lot of fear. And our message is very clear. New Yorkers and everybody visiting our city should certainly stay vigilant and stay aware, and we always urge that, but really should also stay calm and not alter your daily routines. Uh, pretty sound advice. We did have a map earlier. I think Fox and Friends had it just before we came to Air Fran that many of the major cities all across the country have increased police presence today. And people should take comfort from that. Look, Khalid Mishal and Hania, who are both in luxury condos in Doha, we now know getting, you know, spa treatments, are calling for others around the world to have a day of jihad. What, the, what that message really is, I think that's Khalid Mishal trying to appeal to potential lone wolves, individuals with a gun or a car or, or trying to make havoc. We'll see protests probably in, in cities around the country with large uh, Arab populations. Protest is a right in the United States. That's fine, as long as this does not turn violent, either by the groups protesting or by individuals taking action into their own hands. Fran, you were the Homeland Security Advisor to President Bush. And um, one conversation that my partner Dane and I have been having nonstop for the past 24 hours is what's happening on our own southern border over the, the previous two years. And I just want to lean on your knowledge a little bit here. Because mm -hmm. if it is true, and you can read various publications, Washington Post, New York Times, Wall Street Journal, they've all pieced together the attack on behalf of these Hamas fanatics in different ways. And I, I, I imagine the full, complete picture will come true several weeks from now, but it appears that the Israeli intelligence community is trying to keep some of that information private, okay? And that's understandable. But mm -hmm. this appears to be low-grade planning on behalf of Hamas. They appear to have learned to stay off the smartphone and evade technology so they don't tip their hand. Now, if that's true, they learned those lessons from the hijackers back on 9-11 in our own country. How much consideration mm -hmm. Have you given to the possibility that bad groups have sent bad people into our country and they could very well be planning something in the United States as we speak? Bill, look, we, we worried going back to immediately after 9-11 and coming forward that the southern border would be a real vulnerability for us. Um, and we've seen the greatest influx of illegal immigration in the last year. Um, and to me, it, frankly, it's terrifying because I don't think we have a good understanding of who's crossed our border, where they've gone, and what their affiliations are. It's one thing when you're going through a visa process and you're screening people who are coming in via planes, but that southern border is so porous, I think we have to assume not only are these legitimate economic migrants from Central and South America, 
But if I were Hamas, I would certainly uh, infiltrate people through the southern border, seeing what's going on down there. Fran Townsend, former Homeland Security Advisor to President Bush, we thank you, and we will stay in touch with you. Mm -hmm. Appreciate it. Have a good day. Thanks, Bill. Thank Thanks, you, Fran. Good to be with you today.